Okay. He said I could talk. Great. Good morning again. Okay. I'm here today to discuss how an author gets published. How does a thought get into a book? It's a process, and it's a very, very long one, and you need to have patience. Anybody can tell me what patience means? What does patience mean? A lot of waiting, that's right, it's a lot of waiting. Okay, no matter what kind of author you are, and no matter what type of subject you write, it begins with would you believe that at the beginning, when I wrote my picture books, the only way I could do it was in a marble notebook with a pencil. That's what I was comfortable doing at the beginning. Then later I typed on the keyboard in the computer. Depending on how long or short your book is, depends how long it takes you. But today I'm here to talk about the process of writing a mid-grade novel. My two books are for children age 9 through 13, and this is called a mid-grade novel. I had to write, and I had to not only write, but I had to do something called revise. Why would I need to revise? Girl right here, could you come up and tell us? To make a lot of waiting. That's right. It's a lot of waiting. Okay. No matter what kind of author you are, and no matter what type of subject you write, it begins with writing. Would you believe that at the beginning, when I wrote my picture books, the only way I could do it was in a marble notebook with a pencil? That's what I was comfortable doing at the beginning. Then later I typed on the keyboard in the computer. Depending on how long or short your book is, depends how long it takes you. But today I'm here to talk about the process of writing a mid-grade novel. My two books are for children age 9 through 13, and this is called a mid-grade novel. I had to write, and I had to not only write, but I had to do something called revise. Why would I need to revise? This girl right here, could you come up and tell us? To make my piece better, exactly. And guess what? No matter how many times I wrote and revised, guess what I always found? Let's go over here. Come tell us what we found. What I found, at least. Yes, I found so many mistakes. Grammar punctuation, and guess what? In this book, the main character was a man named Mr. Flynn, and I typed his name so many times, and then one day I reread it, and I saw his name wrong as Mr. Finn, like a fish pit. That was not acceptable. So the revising, Oh, it took forever. It took so long. Now, how many of you ever wrote a story and just handed it in, forgot about it? Okay, let me write again. And did you ever do that? You can be honest. Okay. Next time, what should you do? Can someone tell me next time what they should? This boy in the gray, come up and tell us. Because you get a much better grade. Thank you for that. Revising is part of an author's work. 
Just like a teacher will not have a happy face if you have so many spelling errors and grammar and punctuation, guess what the publisher will do if you send in a manuscript? First of all, what is a manuscript? Anybody know what a manuscript is? This girl, come up and tell us what a manuscript is. Well, it's a work in progress, and with a manuscript that you send away that's tight, if it has a lot of mistakes, guess what a publisher will do? Oh, this is sad, but guess what he will do? This boy right here, come up and tell us. What will a publisher do? I don't know for sure, but I think they turn it. <laughs> They'll shred it if they want to take the time to recycle. If not, they kind of put it in the garbage. So you have to hand in as nearly perfect as possible. That requires a lot of hard work to write and revise. And I have a word called research. Why? Why research? Let me tell you this. You have to research the correct publisher. Okay, you can put your hands down. Because, let's just say I wrote a story for boys and girls ages 9 to 13. Let's say I sent it to a publisher who only is interested in books on carpentry or religion or politics. Let's say I sent it to that publisher. Where's the boy who said shred it? That publisher will shred it. So research is important. Don't waste your time or money or the publisher's time in sending it to the wrong publisher. He's not going to be happy. How do you research? Well, in this life, you research both on the internet or something called the library. I hope people still go to the library. So when I was your age, that's what I did. I need to go to the library. Also, authors use a book called Writer's Market. And we read and research. And in this book are lists of hundreds of publishers. And they tell you just how to format your manuscript. And another thing, the word shredding is very popular today, because if you don't follow the directions on how to format to the publisher, they're going to shred it. Okay? It's not that they are intentionally mean, it's just that they have so much work to do and they receive thousands of manuscripts a year of people who want to become authors. So if it's not formatted right, sometimes they tell you, send me the first chapter. Sometimes they tell you, send me a synopsis. Does anybody know what a synopsis is? That's a hard word. Girl in the blue? What's a synopsis? I'm not sure that anything for research Okay, good try. It's not where you list your research. A synopsis is a short paragraph that actually tells the plot of the story, including the conclusion. Some of them don't want a synopsis. Some of them want the whole manuscript. Some of them want something called a query. That's an odd word. Anybody know what a query is? Wow, that's a hard one. Do you know what a query is? Let's see. Okay, let's see if you know what a query is. It's something you search Good try again. It's not something you search a query. And when you send them a couple of sentences encouraging them to want to read more, it's called a query. Next thing you do is submit. The publisher tells you how to send it. Whether you should send it 
through email or through the post office. That is what the publisher does. And then you wait, and you wait, and you wait. Sometimes you can wait up to a year. Sometimes they don't contact you at all. Sometimes they send you a rejection. Can someone tell me what the word rejection is? This girl right here? Let's see if you know what a rejection is. When they don't want your story. And that's very disappointing. And how do you think that makes me feel? Very sad. Let me give you an idea of what a rejection sounds like. There could be many reasons you're rejected. It could be because they just didn't like the story. It could be because they're not interested in that topic. It could be because they have way too many books on their agenda. But when you get a rejection, it reads something like this. And I have had many rejections. Dear Olga, thank you so much for sending in your work to Sterling Publishing and for giving us the opportunity to read and evaluate it. After careful consideration, we have decided that unfortunately, your project is not suitable for our publishing program at this time. We wish we could respond personally, but the number of manuscripts we have been receiving makes this difficult. We know that writing is hard work and that all writers merit some acknowledgement. Although a form letter doesn't speak to that need, please know that we've read your work and appreciate your interest. We certainly encourage you to persevere with your writing and to continue sending out your work for publication. We wish you much luck in finding the right home for your project. Sincerely, the editor. Okay, now. After receiving numerous rejections, which happen to all authors, did I give up? No. Why not? Why didn't I give up? Girl, all the way back here in the blue. Come on, tell the blue. Oh, nice. oh. I know mean, sometimes you get more wear than happens to me. You probably want to keep on trying and get better. Exactly. I had a goal. I wanted to keep on trying, trying. I went in and changed some things. Dad clicks the door open, and just as I'm ready to get in the car, I notice bird poop on the passenger window. Hey, Dad, didn't Mom just take the car for a wash? Yeah, uh, yesterday. Why? The, there's more bird poop on this window than there is up the bird. All right, Jake, I get the point. Don't make an issue and don't finish that sentence. As I enter the car and put my seatbelt on, Dad has already turned on his MP3 player. Oh, not that again, I say, as his music from the 1980s begins. What are you talking about? This is the best music ever. Yeah, right, Dad, whatever. Just as Dad turns the engine on, I turn my head to the right. Hey, Dad, the poop looks different from the inside. <laughs> I can tell he's not paying attention to me, but he asks, how so? Um, I think it looks like a bat. Now that gets his attention. Bat? Where? He turns his head towards me. Yeah, it kind of does look like a bat. That must be an omen of some sort. Omen? What's that mean? Dad lowers the music. That makes me happy. An omen is a prophetic sign. A what? He repeats, a prophetic sign. Yeah, and for the second time, I say, what's that mean? It's a message of some sort. Yeah, Dad, that makes a lot of sense. A message written in poop. <laughs> Here, I'll read it. I make believe I'm reading the window. This window has bird poop. Hey, wise guy, says Dad. Aren't you the one who just said the... I can tell Dad is searching for a word. Poop, Dad, poop. 
So you know, Bengal looks like a bat, huh? Well, there's more than one way to read into things. Messages don't always have to be written in words, Jake. I don't have a clue what he's talking about, and he knows it. Dad, you're really out there. The only thing that poop means is Mom wasted her money on the car wash yesterday. This time, both of us understand, and we laugh. Dad? Yeah, Jake, what is it? I stink. I see Dad's nostrils squeezing together, and he says, I don't smell anything. Come on, I say, you know what I mean. Dad gets serious. Listen up, Jake. Baseball is a sport to be enjoyed. All you have to do is give it your best shot. Be a team player. Keep your eye on the ball and go for it. And repeat, I stink. I don't want to hear you say that again, Jake. Do you understand? This time, I know Dad is serious because he turns his music off and he stares at the road ahead. And then after a few minutes, he speaks. What concerns you the most? Now, from that couple of pages, we get an idea that our main character, Jake, is not too what about his baseball ability. He's not too... What is he not too about? He's not too happy. He's lacking confidence. How many of you have ever lacked confidence in something you did? Well, guess what? You're not alone. All people go through that. All people lack confidence in something at one time in their life. That's life. And the way to get over that is to feel good about yourself, to try your best, and to know that when you try your best, that is the best you can be. If you're not trying your best, and you lack confidence, it's going to keep happening. You're going to feel bad about yourself, you're not going to have confidence, and it's kind of a cycle. But this is a story about a young boy who has a relationship with an older man named Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn, through his magic, teaches Jake all about confidence. And in the end, something really wonderful happens. And this book is available in the school library. So when and if you'd like to read it, you can do that. It's signed by me. And again, when you read the baseball and magic scenes, scenes, that was written by my husband, Bruce. And, well, a lot of children ask me, why did you write a story about an older man, a much older man and a young boy? Do you know why I did that? Why did I do that? Do that. Girl? But guess what? Just as a young boy can learn from an older man, do you know what else is true? What else is true about that? The older man is much wiser. Okay, the older man is met much wiser. But what else? What else about that? Two friends together. Yes, that's it. The old man can learn from the little kid. Because there's so many new things that the older man has an experience and may not know about. But the older man has so much experience and some wonderful stories. How many of you have older people in your life that you like to connect with? Whether they be grandfathers, uncles, godparents, Relatives, neighbors, you have someone in your life who you respect and you can talk to? And you, okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'm really, really glad to hear that. Okay, now I'm going to sort of turn this over to you because I know that you have questions about this 
process for me. So you needn't be shy. And um, how much time do we have left? Okay, we have about 10 minutes, which is great. So I'd like to start with calling on people to come up and ask me a question. And I'm going to just take a sip of water. See, I know that your teachers talk all day, and they're used to talking a lot and a lot. And by now, their throat maybe doesn't get dry, but my friend does. Okay, first question. Girl right here, come up. Let's listen to her question about the process of becoming an author. How does it feel when you like when you book that's published? Okay, it feels wonderful. I feel proud and I know that my hard work paid off. Just like when you write and you get a good grade, how do you feel? Okay. Um, this boy right here. How do you choose the subjects that you do when you write the book? Good question. Sometimes I find the subjects in supermarkets or by observing people or thinking about what I did not have in my life. For instance, I never had a grandfather. So I created a grandfather in a character named Mr. Flint. So when you write, you can do that. You can create the characters you want. Good question. Okay, let's see. Uh, name? Okay. Green. <laughs> Sometimes it is, and sometimes I get writer's block. Do you know what writer's block is? That means I just can't write, and I have to stop and think. And sometimes it's hard to wait. Do you find that it's hard to wait for things you really want? Okay. Uh, let's see. This boy in the red back here. Good question. Both of these books, the process for me to write was about one year. Girl, right here. Why did you become a writer? What, 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 um, inspired you? Thank you for that question. Well, again, I always loved to write. And as a child, I found that through writing, you can have whatever you want, you can go wherever you please, you could be several characters. So it's sort of like watching television when you get to direct. How many of you have ever written something and that you really feel like, wow, this is so much fun? Reading and writing go together. I'm glad to hear that. When you write, you can be whoever you want to be. Next question from right here. How many hours do I write a day? Right now, I've been busy traveling to schools and meeting children and talking about the process. But in the past, sometimes I write one hour, sometimes I write six hours. But sometimes I think, oh, I think I'm stuck and I'm frustrated. But then the next day I would kind of breathe deep and get back into it. But the idea is to never give up what you really want to do. Where do I get my ideas? Again, I get my ideas from life, from people, from situations that happen from events that I wish would happen, and from things that never happen. Boy,
about how long does it take for you to think of an idea and share it with It takes a long while. And sometimes I'm walking around and the character will develop. So one character could take months to develop, to bring to life. And then sometimes I get an idea and it pops right into my head. But I still need to work on the characters. And sometimes, guess what? Sometimes I feel like I'm the characters. Sometimes I feel like I'm a little boy. And sometimes I feel like I'm an old man. Okay. Who did not get a turn? If you did not get a turn, go so ahead. Because sometimes I don't know if I'm calling on the same people. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. First of all, we have some children published on our website. If you visit my website and click on the books, you're going to see some pictures of children who and to the contest that's on my website. So that's one way of being published. But another word of way, teachers, if you can remember this, there is something on the internet called Stories for Children magazine. With parents' permission, they accept submissions from children. And they will publish children in a magazine. Again, it's Stories for Children magazine. And if you just look that up, Google it, it will give you information to encourage children to write. And I just want to tell you one thing that's really important, and I must remember to say it, and that is whenever you children are near your computer, you really need to have some parent or older person near you while you're on a computer, okay? Bruce, will you? We're running out of time. Okay. We're going to stay up for lunch. I'm sorry. Okay. Do we have time for one last question? Oh, yes. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. One last question. Thank you for that. The favorite book is definitely Chapter 2 because I co-authored it with Bruce and it was definitely out of project. But anyway, I would still stay here, but I'm here that you're running out of time. So I want to thank you for being a great audience. Oh, I know, I wish I could take all the questions, but um, again, I want to thank you and encourage you to be breathing and writing. <laughs>